Cytochrome C is one source of genetic information we use to build phylogenetic trees. It's the name for both a gene and a protein, and the protein is involved in metabolism. It's highly conserved, meaning it's so important that most mutations to this gene result in organisms that die. So largely, over thousands of years, it's the same. Genes like this are great sources for comparative information. The nucleotide or amino acid sequence can be used to build trees. Some nucleotide changes will result in the same amino acid sequence. You can look up the wobble effect or a codon chart if you don't remember why. So nucleotide comparisons work well for closely related organisms that may have the same or very similar amino acid sequences. And amino acid sequences work better for more distantly related taxa. I've pulled a cytochrome C comparison from a paper looking at pigeon and dove species. They use nucleotides since the taxa in question are all closely related species. Their study was looking at designing a computer algorithm for creating these trees. Here's what they created. See how each branching event even maps the nucleotide change? We're going to do something similar by hand. First, set up your matrix. All the taxa go along both sides, then find the number of differences between each pair. No differences between identical taxa and you won't need one half the matrix. Then the number of differences are counted up and put in the matrix. Remember, we're assuming differences add up over time along these lineages, that's the lines. So further distance from a common ancestor should mean more differences. I like to work from both ends of the tree. The most different should be the out group. Here that looks to be B. Any with few or no differences are going to branch off very recently in time and represent sister taxa. That's A and C and D and E. And then you look for other potential patterns. It looks like all four remaining relationships could go back to one common ancestor because the number of differences is approximately the same. I'll put A and C at the end because of the single difference. And D and E are also sister taxa. The common ancestor shared by A, C, D, and E should be in the middle of our overall tree. Each node represents a hypothetical common ancestor and the last time the gene pool of the populations was shared. After that, lineages are free to diverge. You can see the approximate numbers of differences and line makes sort of make sense. Once the tree is complete, you can tidy it up or change your style. This tree and this one represent the same relationships. And each node is also a point you can rotate. Watch what happens if I rotate around this node. You could also rotate around the node with A and C or D and E. You just have to move the letters. So there you have it. Hopefully, using molecular data to make trees isn't so bad when you know where to start and what the data represents.